the art of a good hitch. Show me how you guys stand. <laughs> what do the thumbs look like? I do this. Oh, I might do this. Yeah. We're never gonna get a ride. <laughs> Hey all you cool cats and kittens, how's quarantine going? Today I'm discussing slash reminiscing what it's like hiking through the Pasayan wilderness. At 153 miles long, this section of trail through the Pasayan wilderness extends through Northern Washington. This is the longest stretch of trail on the Pacific Northwest Trail without a resupply. That's a long time. Ah! This is some of the deepest backcountry in the United States. Going through the Pasayan Wilderness is like going on an intergalactic expedition and the Pasayan Wilderness is like a wormhole and you just gotta go straight through it and you don't know where you're gonna get dumped off, you don't even know if you can survive it, but you just know you gotta do it to, to fulfill the quest. You have to be prepared to carry food for anywhere between 6 and 10 days, depending on how fast or slow you can hike. Wait, can you just explain for a second what the hell's going on? Well, I'll food for a week. Cause not gonna see me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna. I'll check on you guys in a little bit. I, I have some food that I I'm not gonna eat. I was gonna bring it over, but maybe you don't need it. So this is my food for like seven days. If you want remote, like if you like hiking and not seeing anybody, this is your trail. At the very beginning, I was absolutely horrified to do this stretch of the Pacific Northwest Trail. For one, I thought I was gonna be alone. And two, you're dealing with animals such as bears and wolves and tigers and aliens and Bigfoot. You know he's out there, you know he's out there. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit about what my experience was like. Right, let's freaking go. Fugitive bought some beer. This has to work. Bribing our future ride with delicious Bud Light. Uh, <laughs> All right. We got a ride. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank time. you very much. Here we go. We're starting up a Satan. My pack feels so heavy. Like, really heavy. Have fun. Thank you. The first day was everything I could possibly ask for. I did get a little lost. I didn't film me getting lost because I was really lost and I, I had to think. I'll we'll see you guys. It should be beautiful. I'm looking forward to it. I remember I kept telling myself, you know, you're just, you're just a day in. You can still turn around. You can still turn around if you needed to. It was helpful knowing that Nick and Patty were just ahead of me. It's our first camp tonight. In with Satan. Tell me what's on the menu tonight. Uh, tonight it is Mediterranean couscous with sun-dried tomatoes, salmon. The Mediterranean curry couscous. Mediterranean curry, sorry. <laughs> This is how I bathe in the evening. I remember the first night there was a huge windstorm. All night. <laughs> okay, we're starting day two at the Fisaten. And shit, was it windy last night? <laughs> Yeah, it was windy all night. Like, there were no breaks. I was waiting for a break, but it never came. The next day was one of my favorite hiking days on the Pacific Northwest Trail. Really started to move deep into the Satan wilderness. I must say, this has been a great stretch of trail. I'm on a ridge, so I'm just going up and down, just slightly, very small hills. But oh, my back lit, it's so far. This has been probably one of my favorite sections so far. This is an old miner's hut. This looks like it's just gonna fall down any second. Hey, is that far? Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. Wow. Are those, wait a second, are those binoculars? Yeah. I like them. Uh I was thinking to myself, what is something unnecessary that I would have packed and I thought of binoculars? Unnecessary. <laughs> the trail was just so beautiful. You had these stunning just rock formations everywhere you looked. At some points, I really felt like I was on a different planet. Now you can see it. Wow. Freaking unbelievable. Makes going uphill the last like two hours worth it. Dude, check out these views. You gotta hike to see this. That's what makes it so amazing. 
the end of the second day, I made it to Cathedral Lake. And I, I spotlighted Cathedral Lake in one of my other videos, but this was one of my favorite campsites on the entire Pacific Northwest Trail. Once I got to Cathedral Lake too, I, I felt this sense of, it's gonna be okay, like the fear I was feeling months before I'd even started the trail. You know, this section I was so fearful of, solely it was being broken down, and my realization was that it was, it was nothing to be fearful about. You know, I think sometimes we worry about things that haven't even happened yet, and then when they eventually do happen, you just should have never worried in the beginning. Oh, the sun's setting, it's so pretty. <gasps> It's so pretty. I just wanted to say that so far, this has been such an incredible experience. And man, it was my goal to get to the Idaho border, 250 miles. Um, I'm gonna hit 700, 700 miles tomorrow. Damn proud of myself. And then after that, I just feel like the ocean is so close, you know? Even though I gotta do another 500, I gotta keep going until I see water. All right, day three of the Satan Wilderness. I love it when people that I meet, they're like, oh yeah, you gotta check out, check out this trail that's like kind of off the beaten path and it's down here. I'm like, listen, I ain't doing any extra hiking. I'm staying on the PNT trail, sorry. I bet it's gorgeous, but just can't do it today. We hit these pockets of prairies, and for the first time you could see really, really far in the distance. On day three is when it really, really hit me just how far we were from roads or towns or people. I'm coming down now. All the rocks are like really, really wet, so I just have to be careful every step I take because if I fall wrong and like break an ankle or something, I'm gonna have to use my Garmin in reach to like get help and they're gonna have to like fly in and like helicopter me out. <laughs> Making good progress. It's almost noon and I've already gone almost nine miles, so. But no falling, no tripping. This is Nick's best piece of clothing. Oh my God. <laughs> Real man wear rain skirts. <laughs> I've never even heard of a rain skirt before. They're not, they're not actually that useful. I just like putting it on. Look at this. No, what does this do? Well, and then I just like pull these up. You, you let him up. wear this in public? I encourage it. He thoroughly encourage it. <laughs> wait, wait. Anything that makes me look worse. And it weighs nothing. And I look amazing. <laughs> this is... <laughs> wait, stop. The best look is when I pull it right up. <gasps> stop it! No! No! <laughs> no! <gasps> wait, this is so incredible. what I'm doing today. Hiking. I got like five miles straight uphill in pouring rain. And I'm like soaking wet right now. I'm so tired, but I gotta keep going. I'm freezing. All my clothes are wet. There's no sign of sun. I'm so cold. I'm debating just pitching a tent, but look at this. There ain't nowhere to pitch a tent. It's gonna be like, 20 mile day today. Jesus. Check this out, look at this. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to catch it. Oh, these mountains are beautiful. Blue sky for the first time today. Oh, yes. There was this time where the rain had stopped and the clouds were just sort of dancing around. You, you can see in the distance the mountains sort of peeking out over the clouds. I'm up on this ridge, and it's just, it's amazing how much this wilderness was burned. Uh, I know there was a big fire last year, but I think there was another one a couple years ago. I'm overlooking the, like, just beautiful mountains. They're just all burned. It's really sad. I hate seeing just burnt trees. All right, day four of the Pesaten Wilderness. We're like right smack in the middle of it right now. The guys left really early and I just needed to sleep because <laughs> it was a rough day yesterday. The sun is starting to come out a little bit. Let's go. 
a lot of the day was navigating. The Pacific Northwest Trail is not marked. You have to navigate a lot of it. This is just a perfect example of what you have to go through in doing the PNT. I am literally walking in a field right now and there's absolutely zero trail. Gut Hook is phenomenal. The app that you can download on your phone, that's what I've been using. Without that, I would be, I wouldn't have left Montana. Like, I, I praise Gut Hook. But um, sometimes people make these little, like, rock formation things. This has saved me so many times. So I'll see one of these in the distance and know I'm going in the right direction. If you get lost, you can always find your way. You just gotta be patient and think, but you'll always find your way. I haven't gotten seriously lost yet, and this trail is not really marked. Um, so if I can figure it out, I'm sure you can too. This is it right here. This is the blowdown section that everybody kind of made notes about. So, and there's no trail, but I know I'm supposed to go in that direction. Day four, we had a river crossing. We freaking love river crossings. Ah, oh, river crossings are honestly one of my favorite things. It just breaks up the day, you know? I'm not gonna lie, it looks a little chilly. Oh, all right, here we go. Woo! Oh, it actually feels nice. So on the fourth day, I lost Nick and Patty. They were just too far ahead of me. So I ended up camping in a field. It was actually an airfield. And I got to meet the volunteers who go out and chop down trees and clear the trails for hikers. And along with the volunteers, they have these beautiful horses and mules. No, Look at the horses. That will not burn. Oh, oh gosh, they're so cute. <laughs> so these are the mules that carry the gear that all the, um, the workers that are cutting down all the dead trees. All the mules and horses are wearing these cowbells and the volunteers would let them just run like wild during the night. And so in the middle of the night, they would get so close to my tent and I would hear the bell ringing outside of my tent. And I was like, oh, please God, I don't want to die like this. Just like a mule, like just trampling over my tent. Mule is right outside my tent. It's you, wasn't it? Aww. Today's just really hard. I just don't feel like hiking today. It's just been soaking wet all day because it's just been raining since I got up this morning. And like my pants are soaked. My shoes are soaked. And I got like 25 miles until I, my trail meets up with the PCT trail. And I'm just like, I just don't feel, I just don't feel like it. Hiking, I'm just tired. It wasn't that it was raining, but just the air was really moist and there were like trinklets of water in the air. Everything I was wearing that day just got so soaking wet. And like the brush was so high and the brush was soaking wet. So as I'm trying to move through the trail, it just, it just was a mess. It was a mess. I just wanna like sit in my tent and like eat noodles. Put on some warm socks, because this is just miserable today. When I got out of this really tough section of just wetness and steepness, all of a sudden I hit the Pacific Crest Trail, and that's a trail that runs from Mexico to Canada. So I'll be hiking south down the Pacific Crest Trail. So that'll be exciting. I've always kind of wanted to check it out. Make a mental note. Look at how beautiful this trail is. This is a gorgeous trail. This is a phenomenal trail. Look how wide it is. Luxury hiking right here. It doesn't get any more luxury than this. This section of trail where the Pacific Crest Trail merges with the Pacific Northwest Trail could be some of my favorite trail that I've, that I've ever hiked. I see in the distance, there's like this little trail that's going up this way. And I'm like, oh shit, that's where I have to go. You're just up on this ridge overlooking these valleys and then just the mountains and 
oh my god, everything, it had rained so much, everything was just this beautiful shade of green. It really is some of the most beautiful scenery I've ever seen in my life. Started over there, behind this mountain, came in, hiked all across here, up and down, up and down, up and down, to the top of here, came down, zigzag, 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 to here, and now heading up, 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 over this ridge. The sun. Oh my god, the sun. I'm officially, well, pretty much out of the Vesatan wilderness. Uh, I cannot believe I just did that. So, this is the situation. I, I ran out of food. And so, I'm hiking an additional, like, 15 miles down the PCT to get to Winthrop, which is the next town, so I can get food and resupply, and then I'm gonna hitch a ride back to the PNT trailhead. As I was hiking down the Pacific Crest Trail on that sixth day, the sun came out, and I, I, I don't know, I was like, I was so excited because I knew the hardest part of the Visayan Wilderness, the section of trail I was dreading the most, was over. And it was just this very uh, freeing feeling. Like, I don't know, I, 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 I feel like, it was amazing. A section of trail I was so horrified of, it was probably one of my favorite sections that I've ever hiked. The next level, or the next challenge ahead of me, was the North Cascades. I knew nothing about the North Cascades. After the North Cascades is the Olympics. I knew nothing about the Olympics. I put all my energy and my my fearfulness into the Satan wilderness. And then I eventually made it to the town of Winthrop. I talked to a couple friends who were about a week or two ahead of me on the Pacific Northwest Trail. I realized the hardest part was in front of me. 